Hi everyone. Um, today I'm going to be making a uh, repinnable padlock. Um, I've got this Q um, padlock that's actually very easy to pick. Um, you can see that in another video. Um, and because it's just a cheap lock, I thought it would be a good candidate um, for making a repinnable version. Also, having the key is, uh, is quite useful in this case. Um, now, I've sanded down the edge here. Um, this is where the, the ports are, where the, the pins will be uh, put into the lock in the first instant. Um, I don't know if you can see um, on the, uh, the camera there, but there is a very uh, a set of very faint circles where those ports have been plugged up and then it's just been um, kind of machined over, but it's the same the same metal, so it's very faint. Um, if you can't, if you get to this point and you can't see the uh, the circles, then um, having the key is very useful. Because the key is inserted uh, in here like this, the shoulder of the key um, just here uh, prevents the key going any further, so you can um, line the key up with his shoulder at the bottom there and then by um, drawing the uh, drawing marks where the the, uh, the indentations of the key are um, you can quite accurately approximate where the you know, the ports would actually be so I'm going to go away and do that so get this marked up all right so we've got our drilling points marked out uh, five of them uh, there should be a sixth one which I've not put on there yet, uh, which is the uh, retaining pin for the core. Uh, so the next step is to, you've got a counter punch, a centre punch rather, um, is just to, uh, to punch each of those points or just use a nail, which is what I'm going to be using because I don't have a centre punch. Uh, and then uh, using a small, a small drill bit, just drill in maybe three or four mil. And, uh, and then we'll, uh, we'll come back uh, once I've done that. All right, so an unintended consequence of uh, punching those um, plugs is that they've actually, it's actually knocked them uh, into the shell a bit. So I'm going to change tack slightly. Um, I was originally going to drill small holes uh, into the little plugs and then tap them and then maybe use the tap to pull out the plugs or um, perhaps uh, screw in a bolt or something and then lever them out. That way you can use a, a small wood screw to do that as well. All right, so um, I've got most of the, um, the plugs out of the uh, little pin ports here, uh, but I've encountered a couple of problems along the way. And these are the, uh, the plugs that have come out. They're, obviously they're ruined, but um, that gives you an idea what they are like. Um, so I got to chamber four there, and uh, the tap snapped off in the hole, so um, that's going to be a bit fiddly to get out. The initial plan was to um, remove the core retaining pin in uh, chamber six here, but. Uh, I've taken the plug out, but the uh, the pin is jammed in there. So um, the next step is to to get that pin out somehow. I prefer to get it out um, in one piece rather than just drilling all the way in, because I'm likely to damage the core doing that. So I've got a couple of ideas um, that I'm going to try first before just drilling that out. Um, and once I've done that, I can remove the core and then just get a nail or something and just knock the, the broken tap uh, along with the kind of shredded remains of the, the little plug uh, into the, the hole here where the core would, would normally sit. So um, I'm gonna go in, attempt those things and report back once I've finished. All right then, I've uh, managed to clear out all the, uh, the little ports here. I've got the uh, core retaining pin out. Um, that was the pin in question. Now to do that I ended up 
using the heat method. So I put the, um, just put the whole lock and just sat it on the stove for five minutes till it was kind of a little bit too hot to touch. And then on the reverse side, just tapped it with a hammer and uh, that moves the, uh, this little pin enough to allow the core to come out. And then I just uh, got a nail and just tapped it through and just tipped it out. So uh, that is a way of doing it um, if your, your core attaining pin is um, getting stuck. I've also taken this little uh, cover off here um, because all of the kind of latch mechanism um, got misaligned basically when I was just fiddling with the lock and it's uh, so I thought just taking all the bits and find out how it works. These are all the parts. Uh, this is the core um, which is undamaged so I'm quite uh, pleased with that. I was expecting that to get a bit shredded. Um, these are the two latches. Um, they normally sit together like that. Um, and then these pins and springs um, push the push them apart basically when the key is uh, or when it's when it's locked uh, locked up. These um, little angle parts uh, interact with the, the shackle here uh, like that. So. Um, and this hole is you just didn't assemble the mechanism um, and just insert it in, into that little hole there. Sounds easy, but I expect that's going to be quite fiddly to do. Um, as for the pins, um, yeah, they're pretty basic as expected, uh, so it's a little bit difficult to tell the driver and key pins apart. And uh, we have that roughly made. Um, but the purpose of this is to be able to repin the lock anyway, so it doesn't matter. And it's to save three of the springs. One and four got crushed or shredded, whatever. And um, there's another um, spring in with the core retaining pin, so I'm pleased to have got that out in one piece. Uh, so the next step is to uh, thread. Uh, all of these uh, little ports. Um, what I'm planning to do is uh, just go in probably three or four mil the the depth of the particular grub screws that I'm going to use. Um, you can uh, sorry tap all the way through so you've got like a threaded um, shell. And on this occasion I'm just going to, to go in far enough so that the grub screws will actually uh, reach a point and, and stop. Uh, so I'm going to go and do that and uh, come back when that's done. All right, so we've tapped all six of those little ports uh, with a three and a half mil tap. Um, I've gone in about four mil, I would think. Um, now I can't find a, a source of three and a half mil um, grub screws. Um, so as if this wasn't fiddly enough, Already, we're going to use um, just regular um, three and a half mil screws and uh, convert them to grub screws. So, um, there's a couple of ways of doing this. I'm just going to gauge the uh, the depth of the hole there. We can cut them off in the lock here, but be careful just to leave a little bit extra so you can actually get the thing out. What I prefer to do is just kind of eyeball it, take the screw out uh, and then just cut it off uh, in a vise. And then once you've got the, just the thread, um, you can just file the end flat and then use the hacksaw again to create a, um, a little groove across the middle, um, which allows a flat bladed screwdriver to um, to actually turn the grub screw. Um, so I'm going to go and do that for all six of these uh, and then come back once that's done. Okay, so I've actually reassembled uh, the lock completely now, so it's a finished lock. 
Now you can see the uh, the grub screws are made and uh, screwed into the side there. The little cover's gone uh, gone back on there. Um, I repinned the uh, the driver the driver pins and there's some different springs in there too. Um, I've left the uh, the key pins as they are uh, for now. Um, but yeah, it's a, a working lock. The key's a bit stiff. Um, so to get out, sometimes it kind of hangs a bit. But uh, once you get the, you have to kind of tilt it um, to get the key out. But uh, it is all back together and working. And I suspect there may be um, perhaps the core retaining pin is not quite. Um, not quite right because I didn't use the original one. Um, I use uh, a substitute instead. Um, but yeah, that's a, that was a fun project. And it was way more complicated than I'd imagined it would be. All sorts of um, odd little problems uh, cropped up, as you saw. Um, so I'm thinking of maybe having this as a pass around lock. And uh, basically, when you get the lock, if you manage to pick it, you can then. Uh, Repin it for the next person. Just repin it however you see fit. And um, I've put a load of spools in and some other bits and bobs uh, just to make it more of a challenge. I'll probably have a go at picking it, but uh, uh, picking it myself, but that'll be in another video. Uh, this is just uh, on uh, this video is just on how to uh, how to make um, a repinable padlock, or rather my my attempt at that. All right, guys. Um, I think that's all. Thank you for watching to the end. I'll see you next time.